Hey brothers, what's up? It's the director. Chargers fans, good evening and salutations. We got a fun video planned today, one revolving around our fearless leader, Tyrod Taylor, possibly being the full-time quarterback of this upcoming 2020 season. I wanted to see if we could determine his ceiling with the LA Chargers. It's a new environment for Tyrod Taylor, finally getting the start at QB1. And I think there's some potential for him to absolutely blow up with the LA Chargers. Now, my ceiling may be a little bit lower than yours. This is just kind of my opinion. I'm not a professional NFL analyst. I'm just a fan sharing my thoughts with you fellow fans. And I would love to hear what your guys' opinions are in the comments section below. Maybe I'm too high, maybe I'm too low, maybe I'm just right now before we get into this video guys hit us up with a like and sub if you do enjoy these videos a small amount of time you guys take to hit the like sub bell notification help me out a lot let's get into this video now tyrod entering a unique situation with the chargers he has a really nice roster built around him but he also has something that he's pretty familiar with uh, a team that just drafted a brand new quarterback that he's going to be starting for in light and there could be a possibility that justin herbert takes over for him at any point this season okay in my analysis i kind of want to see what tyrod would look like if he does start the entire season anything could happen maybe you know he gets hurt maybe he's underperforming you know there's a lot of reasons for a, a team to want to push forward their first round quarterback pick and maybe it's you know pressured by the fans or something but i want to see you know if the team themselves have been saying they love tyrod he's anthony lynn's guy they want him to be our qb1 for the 2020 season i want to kind of see what that looks like so I, I put a lot of work into you know determining what my predictions would be and i kind of wanted you guys to come along with me in determining that okay so tyrod taylor Taking a look at his stats, let's start with the, two, the 2016 season. Um, in these projections here too, it's not going to show every single game of that season. It's going to show the ones that he started for, the ones that he played in, okay? So in the 2016 season, all right, or I should say, we should go actually to the 2015 season first. I think that's when he first got his start. Um, I have him down here as passing for 3,035 yards. 20 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, and still rushing for 568 yards and 4 touchdowns. So that's a combined 3,603 yards, 24 touchdowns, and a record of 8-8. Eight and eight. Okay, so that's not too bad. It could have been better, but not too bad. Uh, next up was the 2016 season. 2016 with the Bills. You know, he's kind of firmly gripped his uh, position as a starting quarterback. Uh, 3,023 yards, 17 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, 580 yards on the ground, 6 touchdowns. Uh, for a combined 3,603 yards and 23 touchdowns. Now, keep in mind, the Bills weren't as well-rounded as us. You know, before we even get into that, let's look at his 2017 season, because that's probably the most important. The season that he took his team to the playoffs. Of course, they did lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars 10-3, but he had a pretty decent season himself, too. I have him here at 2,799 yards, uh, 14 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, 427 yards on the ground, four touchdowns for a combined 3,226 yards and 18 touchdowns. So the reason I kind of spit all of those uh, statistics at you guys, so you can follow along with me on my journey of just kind of learning about Tyrod Taylor, you know, his past, his success, his failures. What is he as a quarterback? All right. And to do that, I actually went to the Bills 2017 roster just to kind of look uh, at what he was working with back at the time. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see as well. Uh, hopefully you guys can see all of that just pushed over to the right side. So quarterbacks, it was it seemed like they were trying to work in Nathan Peterman as their starting quarterback, but Tyrod Taylor was definitely in there as well at starter. Uh, at running back, LaShawn McCoy was definitely not a bad running back for them. He was still kind of in his prime. Uh, at wide receiver, though, this is a huge stark difference between the Bills back then and the Chargers now. Their, their wide receiver core, Kelvin Benjamin, Zay Jones, and really, who else? Brandon Tate, kind of. Deontay Thompson, kind of. Like, they really didn't have the best talent and wide receiver. And then even then, Kelvin Benjamin and Zay Jones weren't the best wide receivers in the league by far, okay? Uh, tight ends, he, they had uh, Charles Clay and Nick O'Leary. Uh, both pretty decent. I say Charles Clay definitely wasn't bad in his career in Buffalo. And then his offensive line, the guys that I'll point out that I recognize as good offensive linemen, Richie Incognito, maybe uh, Jordan Mills, Eric Woods, definitely a pretty good center. And then on their defense, which is really important, uh, their defense, Jerry Hughes, uh, Kyle Williams was really good. Taking a look at their linebackers, Lorenzo Alexander was pretty good. Preston Brown was pretty good. Uh, defensive backs, Micah Hyde, EJ Gaines. 
uh, Jordan Poyer, Tredavious White, definitely. Sharice Wright wasn't bad either. And that's that's pretty much it in this roster I see for the Buffalo Bills. Now, what's important to remember about Tyrod Taylor is that he's a game manager. So he's not the kind of guy that goes out and makes huge plays. He's more the kind of guy that secures the football. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't take a tremendous amount of risks. He doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, as you guys saw in his last you know, three seasons as a starter with the Bills, he threw four, six, and six interceptions versus 2017 and 14 touchdowns, okay? So the touchdown to pick ratio is very, very low, and that's what you want to see when operating an offense like the Chargers, all right? But then we're going to take a look at his tenure with the Browns, which was really, really short. Okay, only playing a couple of games with the Browns before getting sat for Baker Mayfield. This is the roster they had to work with. Now, I'm not going to read out everything because you guys know it's the Browns, but I just wanted to point out that this roster looked like it was being built for Baker Mayfield. And that's a situation that we could be seeing again with the Chargers. You never know. Maybe our new roster is built for Justin Herbert, which it probably is. But at the same time, it doesn't mean we shouldn't give Tyrod Taylor a shot so that Justin Herbert can sit and learn as long as possible. But the Browns offense didn't look terrible. You know, uh, Nick Chubb, they still had Duke Johnson back then. Tony Callaway, Jarvis Landry. Uh, they still had Brashad Perryman out there, David Njoku. And then their offensive line wasn't terrible either. Joel Petonio, uh, J.C. Treader, Kelvin Zeitler, like, it was not bad. But at the same time, it's the Browns. They're not managed the same as the Chargers. There's a reason why the Browns, even with a lot of talent in the past, hasn't been as successful as other NFL teams. But all that being said, what does Tyrod Taylor himself have to work with with the Chargers? We went and Ted and looked at the Bills, what he had to work with with them, as well as the Browns, which let's just say that they really didn't give him a shot at all. What if the Chargers do give him a legitimate shot? What does he have to work with out in LA? Well, let's take a look first at our offensive line. Okay, now this is something I still think can improve. I'm still really pushing for us to go sign Jason Peters. I think that would be the last missing piece to this offensive line, and I think Tyrod Taylor would thrive behind it. But just me right now currently, this is what I think the line could potentially look like. I do think we're going to swing uh, Brian Bulaga over to the left side. That's Tyrod Taylor's blind side. We definitely want to make sure that's protected. And yeah, Brian Bulaga is well known for his pass protection attributes. So I think that he's definitely going to be just fine on the left side. Followed by Forrest Lamp at left guard. Mike Pouncey at center, which he's absolutely amazing. Trey Turner, you know, multiple time pro bowler. And then Trey Pipkins on the right side. A lot of people still saying that Sam Tevy could still be holding that position down on the right side. If that's really what their plan is, Definitely go get Jason Peters, dude. Nothing against Sam Tevy. I just think that we've kind of seen what we what he can offer, and he doesn't really fit our team. I feel like we can definitely get a better uh, uh, right tackle out there. And if that's the case, if we go get Jason Peters, then go ahead and put Bulaga right back at right tackle, okay? So right away, the offensive line isn't the worst that we've ever seen in LA or even San Diego. It's, it's actually pretty nice considering the years past that we've had. All right, so O-line, I would say maybe like a B. I would give this O-line at least a B, maybe a B plus. Uh, we just really need to address that tackle position, okay? The other big difference for Tyrod Taylor is the receivers that he's going to have. Uh, you take a look at the talent that the Chargers offer versus the talent that he had in Cleveland and in Buffalo. It is vastly different. So you got yourself Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, who's a great receiving option, uh, Hunter Henry. And then I put Joe Reed in here as like those extra guys. You know, the uh, the rookies that we got coming in there, the depth position players in there, they hold a position to as far as statage. So looking at the past, this was with Philip Rivers under center. This is what these uh, players put up as far as stats, okay? So uh, uh, Keenan Allen, you know, 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, 1,000 yards for Mike Williams, two touchdowns, which is really low. I think that was more of like, you know, uh, an anomaly, anomaly, <laughs> anomaly director for uh, Mike Pouncey. Austin Eckler really shining last year, 933, almost, a you can think of it, close to 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns, which is crazy for a halfback. 652 and five for Hunter Henry, which is really good. And then 830 yards and zero touchdowns for the remainder of the uh, the receiver options for Phillip Rivers. Okay, so what is it gonna look like for Tyrod Taylor? Now, the first thing I'm gonna say just so we don't all freak out in the comment section is 
everything probably should come down a little bit, all right, guys? Because Tyrod Taylor is a different kind of quarterback than Phillip Rivers. I still think he's going to strongly utilize the vast amount of weapons he does have on his offense, but I think everybody's numbers come down just a little bit. Does that mean that we're going to be unsuccessful? No, it's because of our amazing defense that's going to keep us in games. I think these numbers can more than win us games in the NFL. Let's wipe away Phillip Rivers' you know, uh, uh, stats as far as to his receivers and put up what I think could happen with Tyrod Taylor. So you'll notice everybody's numbers come down a little bit. Keenan Allen down to you know over 1,000 yards, you know, 1068 uh, and six touchdowns, which is pretty respectable. You guys know that Mike Williams is kind of one of my breakout guys this year. I still think he has the potential to go even higher, and I can say the same thing about everybody on this list, but I have him around 905 yards and nine touchdowns. I think that um, Tyrod Taylor could definitely utilize him and will want to utilize him as a goal line threat, and I really feel like he has the talent and the capability to become that touchdown hog. So I really like Mike Williams at nine touchdowns. We've got uh, Austin Eckler, 813 yards and seven touchdowns, just a touch below what he was last year. But I do think that he has a potential to go even higher this upcoming year because of how our offense is going to be operated. Hunter Henry kind of dipping a little bit. I do unfortunately foresee maybe him getting injured, um, but that doesn't really reflect the number here. I just don't know how much Tyrod Taylor utilizes his tight ends. Charles Clay and Nick O'Leary, I think they had a combined like five or 600 yards and maybe six touchdowns for those two tight ends in Buffalo. So seeing that just makes me think maybe Tyrod Taylor doesn't utilize him as much. And then the, re the remainder of the receivers, I think still go for like 328 yards or so and a touchdown, okay? So all that being said, uh, Tyrod Taylor, in my opinion, his ceiling with us is going to be around 3,635 yards, 27 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. The interceptions ratio, I just kind of looked at his past years and determined how much he would throw uh, versus how much he would complete. So that's kind of where I have met. You also have to determine his rushing yards too, okay guys? That's been a pretty big part of Tyrod Taylor's game in the past. I think he's going to be around uh, like the middle of his best and the uh, uh, and his worst. And I think that's around 558 yards, six touchdowns, which is not bad. So I have that at a combined 4,193 yards and 33 touchdowns combined with his rushing and his passing. Which when you look at that, it's really not bad, dudes. If we can get a quarterback like Tyrod Taylor, if we can get these kind of numbers out of Tyrod Taylor, you combine that with the absolutely stacked defense that we have right now, I think this is kind of the thinking that our coaching staff is looking at, that Anthony Lynn's looking at, at uh, Tom Telesco, what they're looking at, and why they're so optimistic with Tyrod Taylor, because in my opinion, this is a pretty dang good ceiling in my opinion. And again, I'm not a pro analyst. I'm not a pro NFL analyst or anything like that. I'm just kind of a fan kind of spitballing what I feel, my gut feeling and stuff like that. And that's kind of where I see the team, the offense with Tyrod Taylor. Now, what that translate into wins? I absolutely think so because again, a new another video coming out very soon revolving around our defense. That defense should be top five once again next year. It does. It's even in the conversation for the best defense in the NFL, if you're asking me. So what do you guys think of this Tyrod Taylor projection video? What do you, do you guys think I'm too high? Do you think I'm too low? Do you think you would move the numbers around between, you know, how he spreads the ball around with his receivers? Very open to it. Um, again, this is just me kind of talking to you guys like buddies at a bar, okay? So I feel like uh, I'm pretty confident in that. And at the same time, I'm super open to your guys' input as well. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been the director. Good luck to Tyrod Taylor out there if he's our QB1 for the rest of the season. We'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay frosty.